All right guys, welcome to your second advanced loader tutorial. Today we're talking about the async task loader and a caching mechanism in particular. So what we're gonna do is, first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to cause a delay in here, okay? And we're gonna sleep for two seconds. And we're just gonna surround it with a try catch. Okay, so that will actually block our loader from doing anything or from loading. And the reason we're doing that is just to simulate a database load or a database. Uh, one other thing I want to point out, didn't point out last time, you should never ever store this context. You should always use get context uh, because otherwise you can get context leaks, particularly with cross rotations. You can get really bad ones if you're not careful. So anyway, let's talk about uh, the true advantage of loaders and that is data caching across rotations. So as we put in a delay, we'll actually put that up to four seconds. So we'll make it even more dramatic. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this without any um, on the emulator, and you'll see the way it'll take a sec, four seconds when the screen come up. It'll take a while, and then it'll load uh, the data in. And then the data pops in. So as you can see, it took some time. That's simulating a very complicated database load. Most things would be in the 500 millisecond range. Okay, so we've got that working. So now that that's going, let's talk about caching. So the problem now, of course, is that if we auto rotate this, is it there? Control F11. So if we rotate this again, that's a little strange. The loader must be caching the data automatically for us. No, oh, it shouldn't be though. Anyway, we're going to bring in the data cache regardless. So we're going to create a, a private list in here, which is our cache. String. So cache data. Okay, and then in our on start loading, what we can actually do here is we can bypass this force load. So what we can do is we can say if cache data double equals null force load. So naturally enough, if that's a null data set, force load otherwise in all other cases we're going to call super dot deliver result cached data so that means that this data will load basically we can actually cache our data once we've performed our load so that the loader don't forget persists across rotations so if we tap control f11 the the it will rotate instantly and our cache, our uh, uh, loader, will basically will be reused by the loader manager across the next acti across the activity creation. We'll already have our data waiting for us because we've loaded it previously, and it will instantly appear on screen. So this is for data loading, and we can cache our data manually like this. It's a brilliant way of doing it. So all we have to do down here is. So basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little null check, and we won't bother cache data equals data. So essentially what's going to happen now is we're going to start loading. We're going to see our data is null. We're going to force load. Load and background will be called the pause. We'll get our data as a uh, get our string array from the uh, value resources. This will return. Deliver result will be called with our data. Bang on the money. Cache data will get assigned with the data. And then we're going to the super deliver a result. And then the activity get called up here, swap data, and you'll be able to see what's happening. And then it'll load into the list. However, when the app is rotated, this loader is still alive. On start loading will be called again for this loader. Cache data this time won't be null. We'll have data ready. So we just call super deliver result. Done. Instantly in the list cross rotation you'll instantly be able to see it without having to reload the data so this is one of the major advantages of the loader it's been able to cache results like this for handling rotations and it's amazing so if we press control f11 and the data is there or i accidentally hit the shortcut to stop open broadcaster but the data is there instantly boom perfect exactly what we want 
and that's data caching in a nutshell. Uh, as you can see, very, very simple, very easy, and it's fantastic. So I'm going to actually leave it here for that video, guys. Uh, that's quite a good bit of stuff. Uh, next video, we're going to talk about some of the more advanced uh, things. So what we're going to do next time is we're going to talk about uh, invalidating the data in the loader and telling the loader to reload. So essentially what we're going to do now is we're going to have a system set up so that the loader will observe a data change and we're going to inform it of a data change using a broadcast receiver. We'll use a local broadcast manager for it. So we'll add a button to our main activity or I will. So when it's clicked, the loader will reload the data and through a broadcast receiver, which can be broadcast from anywhere. Uh, one of the apps I'm working on at the moment where I work uh, uses this. So whenever a table changes, whenever our database changes, we have a little class that notifies changes of that table and then the loaders go, oh, I'm observing that table. I'll load up that data. But anyway, uh, that's it for this video, guys. And next time we're talking about uh, observing data.